Hey, it's the Scotch Test Dummies. We got a Shackleton from the McKinley's Expedition. I'm exploring. Let's test it. Test it! Okay. Alright. Okay. Yep. There is an excellent video on YouTube for Shackleton and the McKinley's, McKinley's Expedition. Yeah. Richard Patterson is in it. He helped. What happened was McKinley went on, or Shackleton went on a expedition in the Antarctica. I've read the, read the book. Years, years ago. Yeah, like 1901. It was more like 19. They had the, they set up their huts in the Antarctica, <laughs> these little wood shacks. But you know Lived why. in them. They end up icebound. Their ship is called the Endurance, I yeah. think, and they end up uh, stuck. Okay. And uh, the, it starts to the ice starts to crush the ship, and they literally unload it, and they build shacks out of the ship. Okay. Good. Did not know that. Oh, it's crazy. So Sorry. they take with them a, a special order of McKinley's Scotch whiskey, Bunch rare of old Highland malt whiskey. Why wouldn't you? Keep, keep if you're in the Antarctica, you need some whiskey. Yes, you do. They they get rescued. They leave. Well, Left behind are the remnants. The shacks are there. They don't get rescued. There's, they rescue themselves. Yeah, yeah they, they leave behind uh, right. pallets of whiskey. All about pallets. A couple cases, cases of whiskey are left cases. in one of the shacks. Yes. For a year, 80, 90 years. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And then they are discovered, basically. Leopard found. seal is all I want to say. Now, which brings up, this is actually, there was a first edition that they did of this that I think was European release only. Mm. This was the second one that they did. So they took the whiskey that they found and recreated it. The nose. They, he helped. Yeah. Uh, because his nose and palate is so finely tuned. Right. They tried to recreate this whiskey that had been left in the Antarctica for 80, 90 years. Right. So the second edition they did, and this one came into the States, but they actually did back then, they didn't have bubble wrap. Right. So they, they would use a straw wrapper around the bottle made of straw. Mm. So this one <laughs> recreates that. All right. Straw wrapper made of straw. It's true. It's not yep. false. That's true. And in it, they get they put a little picture or a slide and stuff from the expedition and more information. If you can find this, this goes for one hundred and fifty, hundred and eighty dollars. Yeah, and it was bottled at forty seven point three percent. My Puerto Rican yeah. wife picked that up for me for an anniversary once. So this one, this is the newest or the third. I think I believe the third edition of the. Uh, Shackleton right. Expedition and based McKinley's. Based on an antique blend of McKinley's rare old Highland malt whiskey. Yeah. And it's bottled a little lower, 40% on this one. So, what, 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 let's look and see what we got. Uh, Scotch God shout out. George Kaplan, and we've mentioned George a couple of times, he's a great supporter. Got a nice glass. He comments on the, I took, I stole Bart's glass. <laughs> I was hoping you wouldn't see it until we started filming, but you saw it right before we went live that I'd switched them up. Like, what? What kind of shenanigans okay. are going on? Cathead. George Kaplan comments on our uh, top five bourbons for beginners video. Yeah. Good show. I guess I do qualify as a bourbon beginner according to Bart. Because <laughs> I just picked up a Jack Daniel single barrel barrel proof. That's a good buy. At the Fuzzy Duck in Columbia, Tennessee. Oh, a little shout out to the duck. George goes on. I agree with Scott's list being more appropriate for beginners. I think appropriate's a little harsh. Bart should have titled his list as five bourbons you have to eventually try. Because you had a couple barrel-proof bourbons in there. One that's a little hard to find. Just saying. Here's what I'm saying. And I, I think I explained this in the video. You did. Decently. There are, I run across bourbon and scotch drinkers, haters, bourbon and scotch haters, that their first introduction was something cheap and not all that tasty. Um, so you're saying my picks were cheap and not tasty? No. But what my picks were was to give them 
um, a, a foretaste, a hint, a, a path to follow that really, I think, explodes what bourbon does. However, <laughs> I do recognize, because I thought one fan, and I can't remember who, I wish I could shout it out. He said, I, I, I get what Bart's doing, but I think Bart or some other experienced bourbon drinker would need to be there with the individual to stair-step them through those, those bottles. So not a bad beginner list if you had a facilitator. Hmm. And I, I remember thinking, dang it, that guy's right. Because <laughs> because he said, you know, imagine just going to the store and buying your picks and you could start with the ECBP and be like, mm, you know, I mean, and just knock you off the seat right. and be like, what the hell? I dropped eighty dollars on that, you know, if you found it for eighty. And I was like, dang it. And and I thought that was the right one. So George, I don't necessarily disagree with you. Um my deal was those will capture your soul in a good way. The, my list, I think, captures your, it'll, it'll create your bourbon soul. Hmm. That's all I'm saying. My wife got me this North Carolina hat, and it kind of looked like a gangster hat. And you were like, it's a sports team. It's a college. Yeah. I like it, actually. I'd wear it. It's not bad. I left the tag on it. What do you think of the cat? I'm going retro. I get brine. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You don't want to, it's not a fashion show. Yeah, a lot of brine. That was the first note that I got. Brine. I, mean, I think you can smell it before your nose even gets to the glass. Salt. <laughs> the you, sea. It's kind of a combination there, the brine yeah, and the so salt. You're, you're, you're like saying salt three times, basically. Citrus. <laughs> <laughs> and a lemon-lime zest. Yeah. The citrus. The citrus zest. There's a waxy note in here. Every once in a while I'll mention this, and I think it's just because it's where I get my my waxy, sugary flavor, which is cherry nibs. I pick that up in here. Mm. And you're right, the brine is, is there. I feel like there's something else and I'm not quite pulling it out. You know, it's more like um, you say waxy, and I pictured the, uh, they used to have the little pop bottle. It had the liquid in there, yeah. like the Kool-Aid, but it was in a wax deal, and you yeah. bit into it, and then you sucked the... The cola. The, the, well, there's different straw pops. The different, the, pops. Di the pops out. Right. But then you were left with just that waxy deal that you chewed on for a little bit. Mm hmm Have you had cherry nibs, though? Yes. Because they cut them up into those little mm -hmm. phenomenal little... No, they're just delicious. Nodules. They're phenomenal. <laughs> and that waxy kind of flavor. Sugar flavor. Huh. Hmm. A little bit of grain. That's what I'm kind of pulling in there. It's that, it's that cooked grain. That's it. I'm going to need a little bit more than the sample you pulled. <laughs> There's a nice, uh, nice vanilla citrus on there. I did it on purpose because you took my glass. Oh. <laughs> A slight peat, and I remember we had a sample of the uh, the straw covered one at forty seven point three, and it was there. There was a little bit more peat in that I remember than than in this one. I need to open that. We'll have to do a versus a we comparison. Will. We will have to open it. We'll, it'll get its own review, and then we'll have to do a maybe together. Yeah, we'll snatch this Shackleton up, and compare it. Slight peat. There's a sea salt, hmm. seaweed, and marshmallow. Wow, I get your marshmallow. Did you see that a contribution from sales of this whiskey will be made to the Antarctic Heritage Trust? Hmm. Sports ongoing care of Shackleton's Antarctic base and the Trust's trust mission of con to conserve. Hmm. Huh. I had not seen that. I hadn't seen that either. Nice vanilla, briny, citrus, marshmallow sweetness. Hmm. That's interesting. Until you said marshmallow, because you're right, it almost feels like that big old giant fluffy marshmallow. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. And the, uh, a little hint of the peat smoke wrapped in near the finish. 
The finish itself gives me the grain and a dry astringency, a touch of the marshmallow, and a, a hint, a faint, faint hint of the peat slides all the way through. Hmm. Uh, Shackleton offers robust notes of vanilla, honey, ginger, and licorice with a whisper of bonfire smoke. Mm. The, uh, now, I know our price point, which we'll bring up here in a little bit. but I've been showing it, I think. And this is good. It's tasty. My biggest knock is that it's 40%. You wish God, it was 46. Well, the other one's 47, I guess, if you want the higher strength one. Get it. Yeah, we'll have to try it. We'll have to direct compare it. Because do you pick up, I mean, I'm not sure if I, I, I mean, when I taste it, I don't think, oh, it's too watery. So, I mean, I don't feel like the 40% is too low. You do? Yeah. Mm. Mm. 87 for me. I like the flavor notes that are through there. I like the brine. Oh. So. Jackpot. Yeah. Bingo. Right on the head. A bingo coming on. Oh, all right. Here it was. The expedition was in 1907. And they did... thought they were all dead. And he, he got all of them out. Oh, there it is. So in 1907 and mm -hmm. 2007. So 100 11. years. 11. Wow. 11 intact bottles containing this perfectly preserved whiskey were recovered from under the ice beneath Shackleton's base camp. Um, yeah, they had leopard seals literally come up and attack them. But there's and, a there's a great YouTube video though that, that details the expedition itself and how, you know, the ice the Shackleton McKinley's rare old Scotch, mm -hmm. the wood cases left behind, discovered, safely transported to be extracted from the bottles and preserved and tasted and they i think they only opened one bottle maybe two out of the 11 and they were taken to a museum they took one or two to be sampled and to be tasted so they could try to recreate it but it was a great video mm. we'll have to see if we can put a link to i'm telling you go go read the book i was in a book club at work and it was suggested i think by tater really yeah and uh, I remember thinking, ah, really? And then That's an actual it. person. Yeah, it is. Tater. Yeah, Tater. <laughs> Not the truck from Cars. Uh-uh. Not Mater. Oh, that's Mater. Yeah. That's right. Tater. This is more like Tater. Mater. This is more like Tater. Who is the comedian that actually drank scotch that had the Tater salad? <laughs> he was part of uh, Jeff Foxworthy's deal. Wow, you're and, going uh, way back. I know. He always showed up with a little scotch. And... Uh, he had his whole story where he got stopped in his small town and the guy like knew him and he gave him the name that his name was Tater Salad. And then like years later, satellites align and he's in LA or something. He gets stopped and they're like, are you AKA Tater Salad? <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's where uh, Tater got his name. Um, I can picture him. That's yeah, uh, Ron, Ron. Um, oh, I had it too. It was there and only Ron came out. Ron. Oh, hmm. I know. Um, 87, 87, $30. $33. $33. $33. Thirty oh, three, dollars mm -hmm. Yes, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's tasty. Yeah. Um, it's worth a try. I don't think you'd be disappointed. No, I think it's really good, actually. It's got a, a, a hint of the smoke in there. I mean... Now here's the, here's my deal. People are going to start commenting. Well, for thirty dollars, I can get A, B, C, D. Yes, you can. I'm just saying, for thirty dollars, you bought this. It's what good. would be the it's A, B, C? I mean, no, every, No, I'm just saying. Yeah, any video we do, we say this is fifty five dollars and it's worth it. And somebody will comment and they say, well, for fifty five dollars, I can get blah blah blah. Yes, you can. <laughs> that is correct. Sure, we're saying it's worth it it's for thirty three dollars. Thirty three dollars, yeah. it's worth it. That you don't, buy this for thirty three, you're like it's worth it. Don't we're compare not saying it it's to, better than your favorite. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Just trying to squash that one in the bud right right now on this one. Ron Jeremy. <laughs> no, no. That's a Ron something. What? The comedian. I don't know. 
It has to take We are caught up on our Patreon supporters. Uh, thanks to everybody again there with Patreon. Big help. Um, go to scotchtestdummies.com. You can order our coins. We didn't use any in this episode. This whiskey hats. You can order a Scotch Test Dummies Glen Karen or a t-shirt. Helps Everything helps support us. Really stuck and on the Ron. Thing. Ron. Every Ron named person, including the, I'm gonna, the I'm chubby gonna, fella. I'm going to take care of it right Yeah, here. take care of it. We got, we got the internet. Ron... White. Boom! Ron, Ron White. White. Bam! See don't how quick up. that was? You sat there for was 10 good. minutes. That is. Don't look up Ron Jeremy. You don't want to see it. You don't. Maybe you do. Don't know. Don't. Scotch it! You Scotch got. Cilantro. Don't. Dumps. Mean look, we're on an expedition. Yeah, it's cold. Mm.